7.2 arithmetic sequences and series. All right, so uh, basically what we are talking about here is a better way to find some patterns. Um, in the first section, it was probably a little more challenging for you to sit down and actually find out what a pattern uh, to some of those sequences actually were. Well, I'm going to give you a little formula that helps you out here and makes things a little simpler for you to uh, find these formulas. So an arithmetic sequence um, basically is saying there's a difference between numbers and that difference between the numbers is constant. That's basically what we're saying. Um, so it's like those problems I gave you like 2, 4, 6, 8. The difference between the numbers every single time is 2. That's constant. So that means it's an arithmetic sequence. So take a minute here, write down this formula. This is the formula and we're going to go over what each term in this formula actually means to make it a little more beneficial for you. Um, what we have here is um, a sub n, which stands for the last term that you're looking for. Okay, a sub 1, which stands for the first term you're looking for. n stands for the number of terms. So if I said I want you to find the sixth term, I plug a 6 in there. And d stands for the um, constant term that is increasing by each time. And we call that d the common difference. So in example one here, is it arithmetic? Well, the reason we can tell if it's arithmetic is if it's going up by the same number every single time. Well, from negative three to one, it's going up by four. From one to five, it's going up by four, right? From five to nine, going up by four. Nine to 13, going up by four. So if it's going up by four every single time, that means it is arithmetic because it goes up by the same number every single time. However, when we look at this one, we go up by three, go up by five go up by 7, go up by 9, going up by a certain number every single time. But the number is not constant and is not the same, therefore it is not arithmetic. So jumping to example 4 here, um, so we can solve these problems. Um, and the, the reason why I'm jumping the gun and I'm doing some that are a little more challenging in the notes is because I will eventually have some practice problems for you and the practice problems you'll see how simple it is to just plug the numbers into the formula to get your answer. So I want to give you some examples of some more in-depth ones on how you can solve these. And basically here's what this means. What this means is the sixth term is 10 and the 21st term is 55. That's what I'm saying right now. Well I know that I'm going to have to use this formula. Um, the arithmetic formula and I also know that it says that we want to find out what term, like maybe it's the 8th term, maybe it's the 17th term, but we want to figure out what term gives us 40. That's what we're trying to figure out here. So there's a formula and I know I have to use that formula. So I'm going to plug in what I know. I know that, for example, the 21st term, that's why I put an N there, is 21. I know that the 21st term, which is what I have right here, 21 goes in there, and I know that it's 55. So everywhere where there's an a sub 21, and the reason why I put that in there is because that's an n, right? So everywhere there's an n, I put a 21. I know that a sub 21 is 55. I also know that 21 minus 1 is 20. So currently I have a formula right there. 55 equals a sub 1 plus 20d. Really can't do anything about this because I have an a and I have a d and that really doesn't help me out at all. I have two variables and I can't solve for either or. So let's use this now. I know the sixth term is 10. So I plug a 6 in. 6 everywhere there's an n. Then I also remember that the sixth term is actually 10, so instead of a sub 6 I put a 10 in there and 6 minus 1 is 5. Basically here's what I can do. I can remember back to chapter 3 right now. And when I remember back to chapter 3, I could sit down and remember that, hey, we talked about systems of equations. They might not be x's and y's, but it's two variables, right? An a and a d, an a and a d. So if I set those up on top of each other and find something that's in common to take out and try to solve them that way, which I realize that I can get the a's to cancel out if I just take that negative through, right? If I take a negative through to everything, I can get these a's to cross out. So if I take a negative through here, negative 10, 55 minus 10, 45. Take a negative through here, the a's cancel out. And if I take a negative through here, 20 minus 5 is 15. 
So the reason I did this is I can now solve for D, right? And when I do that, I can divide both sides by 15, and I end up finding out that D is 3. This helps me out actually a lot because now I know what D is in my formula. So I can come down to one of these two because now that I know what D is, I can plug it into either or and figure out what A is. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to just plug it into this one because I think it'll be easier. I plug a D in there, or for D, I put 3. So it's really 5 times 3, which is 15. So to solve that equation for A, I can subtract 15 on both sides and I end up with negative 5. Well, the problem's still not done because I need to figure out what the actual formula is. But here's the kicker. I now know what D is. That's 3. And I also know what A is. That's a A sub 1, which is negative 5. So I plug those in. Plug in a negative 5 there. Plug in a 3 there. And it says, let's solve for N when A sub N is 40. So A sub N, I plug the 40 in there. So I take this 3, I distribute it through. So I get 3N minus 3, and I still have that negative 5. I combine my like terms. I have a negative 5 and a negative 3, so I have negative 8 plus 3n. And to solve that equation for n, I just simply add 8 on both sides to get 48 equals 3n. Divide both sides by 3, and I end up getting n equals 16. So what I'm saying is the 16th term is 40. That's what we're saying. The 16th term is 40. Arithmetic series is the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic uh, series. And the sum of a finite arithmetic series is written like this. So here's your formula for that. The sum is written as n, which is the number of terms, a sub 1, which is the first term, a sub n, which is the last term. So you take the first and last term, add them together, divide by 2, and times it by the number of terms, and you got yourself your answer. So when we come back here, we'll finish up 11.2 um, in arithmetic sequences and series, and we will start with example 5.